Alrighty, loves, welcome back. We are just going to pick up right where we left off. Um, keep your journal nearby. There are less reflection questions this time around, um, but you'll probably still want to take some notes um, and there will definitely be a few places to journal um, and reflect. Uh, I'm not going to play music in the background this time, um, just since there are less uh, journaling prompts. There's just a little bit less for me to think about, you know, when I'm recording these calls and thinking about the music and all of that stuff. Um, it can be a little bit of like a technical overload. So I'm going to keep it simple, no music, but feel free to put your own music on in the background um, as you work through this part. All right. So part three, adopting a lunar lifestyle. So now that we have confirmed that you are indeed the divine creator of your life and that absolutely anything is possible for you, I'm excited to teach you my cyclical manifestation ritual inspired by the phases of the moon and designed to help you achieve your wildest dreams without burning out. So this is a little graph that shares um, what my process looks like. Um, and we are going to dive a little deeper into that process here shortly. Um, but first, uh, let's just talk a little bit about cyclical living, leaning into the cyclical rhythms of nature. So there's a season for everything. Nature follows a cyclical pattern. Just as the sun rises and falls each day, the seasons change over the course of a year. Following the moon. So research shows that people have been looking to the seasons and the sky for guidance for more than 30,000 years. Long before we had the modern day calendar, the moon's cyclical nature helped people tell time and plan for the future. The many faces of the moon serve as a daily reminder to honor the ebbs and flows of our natural energy levels. So that's why I love the moon so much. Um, also the moon, has this strong gravitational pull that affects the changing tides in our oceans and bodies of water. It regulates our climate, making Earth a livable planet. And this gravitational pull can also affect our physical bodies and energy levels. So aligning your actions with the cyclical phases of the moon is a fun and easy way to create anything that you could possibly dream for your life. Learn to ride the waves instead of swimming against the current. So learning the lunar phases. Now, I just wanted to share kind of what the, the lunar cycle looks like. Um, we start up here uh, with the new moon, which I'll sometimes call the dark moon, because during the new moon, the dark, the moon is dark in the sky. So when the moon goes dark, we mark the beginning of a new 29 and a half day lunar cycle. And then after a brief period of darkness, the moon will grow in appearance for about two weeks until the next full moon. And that's kind of known here as the waxing moon when the moon is growing in the sky. And then around day 15 of the lunar cycle, the moon reaches peak illumination and will appear full and bright in the sky. And we all know and love the full moon. Um, and then after that, for about two weeks after peak illumination, the moon will begin to shrink in appearance until the next new moon. And that's what we call the waning moon when the moon is getting smaller in the sky. So I like to think of the new moon or the dark moon like a winter season. The waxing moon like springtime, the full moon like summer and the waning moon like fall. And really everything in life in, in nature is cyclical. And you could just kind of think about this like the days of the week, every day. We have this kind of winter season overnight where we rest, we sleep, we recharge our batteries. And then we wake up in the morning feeling renewed, refreshed. Hopefully you had a good night's sleep and your cat didn't keep you up all night like mine does. 
Um, but so in, anyway, in the morning, your energy is kind of rising. Um, and you can think of that like springtime or taking aligned action towards your goals. Things are starting to bloom. And then in the summer um, or the afternoon, it's kind of like that summer season where maybe your energy is at its peak. You're kind of celebrating all that you've accomplished through the day. And then you start to wind down. You start to prepare for the day ahead. Um, and you start to kind of get ready for bed and make sure that you can get another good night's sleep so that you can wake up refreshed and ready to do it all over again. Um, and that kind of refers to our circadian rhythm, that 24 hour biological clock that we work on. But if you're a menstruator, then you have this secondary clock as well. Um, which is like our, um, infradian rhythm. That's what it's called. And, uh, this is usually like on average, a 28 day cycle. Um, and our hormones kind of change throughout that cycle. So during our menstrual phase, I like to kind of think of that as a winter season. We, um, we need a little bit of extra rest, some extra downtime, some time to care for ourselves a little bit better um, because our hormonal levels are at their lowest. Um, and then during the follicular phase, um, our energy levels are going to start to rise. Uh, our hormonal levels are going to start to rise. And so we're going to have a little extra energy to take action towards our goals. Um, and then during the ovulatory phase, you can kind of think of that like summertime, you're glowing. Um, this is a really great time to maybe be out socializing and spending time with your friends and family um, out in the community. And then during your luteal phase, um, during the PMS phase, uh, you might start to kind of want to detach from your community a little bit and spend a little bit of time kind of tying up loose ends. Um, reflecting. I know I can be a little bit moody during this time. So it's usually a good time for me to spend a little bit more time by myself. Um, and then especially if you are really like using that time to kind of get organized and prepare for your cycle to begin again, um, you should be able to then create the space that you need to rest uh, during the upcoming menstrual phase. And when you're bleeding, I also um, really like to note that we have a lot of different superpowers during these phases, and I'm not going to get too far into it, um, but we're very intuitive during that menstrual phase, and uh, this is a really great time to rest a little bit more and to uh, just spend that time on your own um, and receiving those divine downloads. Um and then during your follicular phase, you're a little bit more creative, um, a little more strategic. Uh, the kind of emotional part of the brain kind of shuts down here. Um, and so we can kind of make these really like clear um, choices and we can take aligned action towards the things that we want to create. Um, and then uh, like we mentioned, during the summer, you just have these like higher hormonal levels. So your energy levels are really high. And that's kind of a good time, I like to think, to to take a break from all of the work that we're doing and just to really celebrate. And then uh, during the luteal phase, like I mentioned, um, that's a really good time to just be kind of uh, taking that more aligned action. but. Uh, really more so just to kind of clean up and prepare kind of like animals do like when they're preparing for the winter before hibernation um, and just making sure you have all of those loose ends tied up and and you're ready to then begin the process again and take that much needed break before uh, diving in to all of the work that you might have have to do coming up. So aligning your actions with the phases of the moon. So four phases to know, like we just talked about, there's the new moon, the first quarter or the waxing moon, the full moon, and the third quarter or the waning moon. So the new moon is a time to connect to your divine self, a time to welcome in a fresh start, 
like we traditionally do during a new year, a symbolic winter season and recognition of a new beginning, a time to look inward for guidance as you plan for the future, and a time to rest, reflect, and reset. Then I like to use the first quarter moon as kind of my marker for where to kind of shift my focus to the creation phase um, during the waxing moon. That's a great time to create your dream life, a symbol for progression and a perfect time for taking aligned action towards your goals. The growing energy of the waxing moon will aid in the process. Think of this like the springtime when you're tending to your garden and watering the seeds you planted with the new moon. The full moon is a time to celebrate your harvest, a symbolic summer season, a reminder to give thanks for the abundance already present in your life, a time to harvest the fruits of your labor, so to speak, or to collect the rewards from actions taken during the waxing moon. And the waning moon, um, if you want a symbol for that or a marker, is the third quarter moon, um, which will appear to be a half moon. Uh, but it's called the third quarter. It's the final quarter of the whole lunar cycle. Um, and this is a symbol for letting go and a time to clear space for what's coming next. So leave the past behind you and focus on recharging your batteries like a tree in autumn, shedding its leaves to preserve energy for the winter season ahead. Release all thoughts and habits that have negative impact over your life Reflect with gratitude on your progress as you focus on slowing down and tying up loose ends ahead of a symbolic winter season. So what you need to know or the verbs that I've kind of come up with to symbolize the kind of action that you could be taking during each phase of the moon or of your own lunar cycle, your inner hormonal cycle um, during the dark moon or your menstrual phase, you want to connect. During the waxing moon, you want to create. During the full moon, it's a time to celebrate. And during the waning moon, a time to clear. So celebrate. The full moon is a time for welcoming any kind of positivity into your life. It's a symbol of celebration, completion, abundance, and gratitude. And a time to give thanks for all that was brought in during the waxing moon phase. You might feel a heightened sense of energy during the full moon. So lean into your full power and shine your radiant light like the bright moon for all to see. Gather with loved ones, throw a dance party, and dig into the decadent life unfolding around you. Remember to surround yourself with people who lift you up. And I just like to mention here the reason that I like to teach this beginning with the full moon phase rather than what might seem logical to start with the new moon is because I feel like anytime that we want to create something in our lives, anytime we want to see some kind of transformation take place or a change to happen in the world around us, the first place to start for me anyway, is to celebrate where I am now. Um, before you start, you really like setting new intentions. Think about where you are right now. And how can you find the good in that? And this is just a photo from my wedding of me and my mom dancing to our song by Leanne Walmack. I hope you dance. Uh, and so if you guys don't know this song, really the whole uh, kind of theme of it is if you get the choice to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. So I hope that you take the opportunities that pr are presenting themselves to you. Um, that you can find the enjoyment in the present moment and uh, just to find, you know, more pleasure in the day to day um, and to seize the day. And so a full moon particularly is an amazing time to celebrate, to have a dance party, to spend some time with your friends. Um, and of course, this is all, you know, about how you are feeling. And I don't, um, I don't want to tell you exactly how you should feel. You know, sometimes I feel like the full moon can actually have um, almost, it can almost give me like this overwhelming 
sense of energy. Like I'm not super sure what to do with it. And, um, if you need some time to, to stay at home and, um, you know, not actually just be out celebrating with your community, that's okay too. Um, but just find ways to, uh, just enjoy life and to celebrate whatever season that you're in and whatever part of your journey that you're on before you go, you know, making any other big plans or worrying about how you can make changes, um, to your life. The three actionable steps. So number one, deliver, number two, dance, and number three, devour. So in those final days of the waxing moon phase, when the moon is almost full, and that's what we would call a waxing gibbous moon, um, this is a great time to crush your to-do list. Use that extra energy to show up for yourself. Holding yourself accountable and following through on your promises builds confidence Plus, you'll feel ready to celebrate and let loose if you've already accomplished a goal. So remember, done is better than perfect. Do what you can and then take a well-deserved break. Two, dance. You are on a journey of divine transformation. Before you close the door on one chapter and step forward into the unknown, find what you love about each season of life and soak it up. Enjoy the heck out of it. Let loose and find meaning and humor in every situation. Pour up some heart opening cacao, relax into your body, and rejoice in the present. And three, devour. Take that full moon energy into the first few days of the waning moon and dig in. And so this is the phase of the moon that we would call the waning gibbous. Indulge in every decadent, delicious, delectable piece of the divine life unfolding before you seize the day, take inspired action and say yes to the opportunities that feel aligned. Tomorrow isn't promise. Tomorrow isn't promised. So eat like it's your last meal, dance like no one's watching and take what's meant for you today. Don't worry about saving some for later. Feast, savor and share what you've got with the people you love. So what do you love about this season? How can you bring more enjoyment into your day-to-day? Go ahead and take a minute to think about this. Feel free to uh, take some notes. Um, And just a reminder that these are questions that you can go back to. Um, So if you don't feel like you have enough time to really reflect right now while we're working through the workshop, that's totally okay. Or you can feel free to pause the video because I know that you are watching this as a replay. So pause and take as much time you need with any of these reflection questions. So moving on to the waning moon phase, clear. When the moon is getting smaller in the sky, it's a good time to declutter, literally and symbolically. What do you want less of in your life? Let go of negative energy and release anything that's not serving you to make space for the blessings coming your way. Clean out your closets, give thanks for the old, and welcome in the new. Let this lunar phase serve as a reminder to slow down and step away from your community after a busy summer season to focus on yourself. Use this time to reflect and prepare for a slow and rejuvenating winter season during the dark moon. So this is kind of like a symbolic fall season. And like I mentioned earlier, when the trees start to lose their leaves during the autumn season, um, it's actually because they are physically pushing the leaves off so that they can start to preserve energy. Um, Because during the winter season, they kind of go into this hibernation mode. And so um, they actually have to physically push off those leaves. They don't just kind of happen and to fall off um, because the weather's changing. This is something that the trees physically have to make happen. Um, And so I just like that symbolism um, because a waning moon is a great time to physically detach from belongings that are no longer serving you. 
Um, and it's not just going to happen. Like you actually have to take the action to kind of clean things out, to um, get really organized, to do whatever you have to do to start to kind of conserve some energy for the winter season ahead. So this is a good time to host a clothing exchange, have a yard sale, or donate anything that's been cluttering up your space. And I wanted to add this uh, little image of Palo Santo. Um, this is uh, a little piece of wood. Um, Palo Santo is actually Spanish for holy wood. Um, and it is used to kind of clear the energy in a space. Um, and so if you burn the end of your Palo Santo uh, and you kind of let it catch fire, um, and then blow out the flame, it'll start to just release a smoke and you can kind of blow on the end of the tip to uh, keep that ember kind of going and burning. And you'll want to walk around your space and just kind of waft it and allow the smoke to cleanse the area. Um, but what I love about Palo Santo, um, rather than maybe like a sage or something like that, is that it's actually known um, to be a really great tool for setting new intentions as well. Um, and you can simultaneously clear your space and let go of any negative energy while also setting new intentions. Um, and a fun little spell that I like to say uh, while I'm smudging um, or, or even just cleaning um, is north, south, east, west, clear this space, make it fresh. When I rise, when I rest, in this space, I feel my best. And of course you can use that one or you can just make up your own little spell or you can simply just set uh, an intention to welcome in peace and positivity into your space. So three actionable steps during the waning moon phase. One, deliberate, two, delegate, and three, detach. So it's really important to pause every so often to reflect on your progress. Let the third quarter moon serve as your reminder to slow down and check in with your goals. You're constantly growing and changing as a human being, so it only makes sense that your goals would grow and change along with you. If you find that a goal you've been working towards doesn't quite line up with the feelings that you hope to manifest in your life, remember that it's okay to pivot. And I just also wanted to mention really quickly, I was having a conversation with my partner, Alex, just this morning. And we were talking about how manifestation is really just kind of like a goal setting process. Um, but the distinction for me is that I like to think about what I really want to manifest big picture. And then I use my goals to help me to get there. And I realized that there are a million different paths that I could take to get to where I really want to go at the end of the day, your goals aren't the end. They're just a means to the end. And so if something has to change, if a goal that you've been working towards just really isn't like aligning anymore, then it's totally okay to change course. And that's why it's so important to con continue checking in because sometimes we set a goal and we keep working towards it, even if something has changed in our life and it doesn't really feel aligned anymore. We just feel like because we set this goal, we have to do it. But if you really focus on your overall big picture life goals, what you really want to manifest for your life, you'll see that there are a million different paths that you can take. And so if something isn't quite working out the way that you thought it would, um, I'm not saying just to give up, but give yourself permission to reevaluate. Uh, and then step two, delegate. You can do anything, but you can't do everything. If you're coming up with plans to accomplish really big aspirations all on your own, you're bound to hit a point where you begin to feel overwhelmed or stuck. So entrust another person or even a form of technology to assist you in getting to your destination. I don't know if you guys have used AI yet. Um, I really haven't, but I've been hearing so many good things about it. Um, I use a lot of different like automation tools in my business and that's really helped me, but there are so many new kind of artificial intelligence, um, all of these different forms of technology. 
that we can really use to start to take a little bit of the everyday tasks off of our plates. Um, and so this is also a really good time to reach out to your community and recruit a team of people to help you bring your dreams to life. If there's something that, you know, just doesn't feel aligned with your superpowers, but it's a part of the, the plan or the process to get to where you want to go, don't be afraid to ask for help. You, you don't have to do it all. You really want to make sure that you're reserving your time and energy for the things that you're best at. And so um, you can also start to just really make a list of everything that needs to happen or anything that didn't get done and maybe delegate a day for yourself to do it. If it's something that you do want to keep um, on your workload or on your plate, then make sure that you're kind of delegating a day and carving out a time to actually get that done. Or release that task over to somebody else, or maybe just dump it completely if you realize that it's not actually important. Um, and if it's if it's not urgent, just kind of set aside some time down the road to get it done. And three, detach. So we've talked about this a little bit already, but spend a time, spend a period of time away from your community, especially if you're coming out of a busy summer season. Do a digital detox, step away from your daily responsibilities and give yourself permission to go MIA for a little while. It's really important to make time to get quiet and check in with your highest self. Your intuition is always speaking to you, but the noise of our surrounding has a way of drowning it out. Um, so for me, um, I don't know if you guys know human design, but I am a projector. Um, and so there are these four main types um, of uh, human design types. And I'm not going to go into that because, oh my gosh, I could totally go down a rabbit hole here. Um, but it is something that I would highly recommend that you look up. Um, and if it's something that resonates, you can go a little bit deeper and you can always reach out and ask me questions if there is anything I talk about here that we didn't really dive super deep into. But I'm a projector, and um, that means that uh, I need some extra time to rest. I don't work on the same kind of uh, circadian rhythm that other people do. Um, I definitely will be able to exert a lot of energy, but then I really need some time to step away and rest. And so if you resonate with that at all, you don't have to be a projector to resonate with that. I think that often... Um, the people that we're spending time with, um, the just different things that we're doing in our day to day can uh, really impact our energy levels. And we can sometimes take on the energy of other people. And so if that is something that happens to you regularly, then make sure that you're really giving yourself that time to step away um, and get comfortable with being alone, because that is when you're really going to start to receive that divine guidance and you're going to really need that time to break away um, so that you can start to take the kind of action towards the life that you want and not just what you may be picked up from other people. We get so much advice and information from um, not only the people that we're spending time with, but like the podcast that we're listening to, the TV shows that we're watching. Um, and so really be intentional about what you're allowing into your space and take those much needed breaks away so that you can really start to tune into that divine wisdom. Intuition, I had to put in a slide about this. Um, your mind is the processor between the physical realm and the intuitive realm. It helps you solve problems and make decisions, but it's really important to remember that you're so much more than your mind. You're a spiritual being having a human experience. And when you can connect more confidently to that divine spirit, your essence, your decisions will become so much easier. Your path will become clear and you'll flow in harmony with universal guidance. We're always connected to our intuition, but often the voice of our mind interferes and makes it difficult to hear what the intuitive voice is telling us. So step away from the hustle and bustle every so often to slow down and tune in to that inner wisdom. And you don't have to just 
like meditate or, um, you know, do any of those traditional forms of meditation, um, you can try any of these fun activities that I've listed here or um, anything that uh, you feel really helps you to kind of turn off that uh, monkey mind and connect to your intuition. So gardening, painting, drawing, walking, yoga, swimming, hiking, journaling, singing, dancing, reading, cooking, pulling an oracle card. Maybe you're somebody who just loves to clean and decorate and organize. That's something for me that really kind of helps me to um, get be present and kind of turn off all of those millions of voices happening in my head all of the time. Um, maybe you play an instrument or you just love listening to music, scrapbooking, stargazing, pottery, um, doing something with your hands, making something always feels uh, like really good and and helps me to kind of get into that creative state. Um, photography, climbing, maybe you just spend a lot of time out in nature, casting spells. Um, the list could go on and on. So uh, feel free to just kind of explore and I always also like to just recommend maybe doing some of the things that you like to do when you were a kid, playing sports, um, uh, just, you know, painting, drawing, anything like that, that we've maybe lost touch with um, later on in life. Those are a good place to start. And some reflection questions from the for the waning moon. Uh, things that you can reflect on or meditate on around the third quarter before setting your new intentions for the upcoming lunar cycle. What have I enjoyed about this season? When have I felt irritated or triggered? What feels energizing versus what feels draining? What's the best thing that's happened lately? What's exciting me right now? What am I calling in more of in my life? What's weighing me down or holding me back from living my dharma? And you can also use this tool called an action priority matrix when you're feeling overwhelmed by a growing to-do list. So write down everything that is that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, everything that maybe is on your to-do list, things that you know haven't gotten done. And then consider which tasks take priority and which might not be so important at the moment. And so you can then separate all of that, those tasks, that big list into these different boxes. Maybe there's something that's urgent and it's important to you. So you do it right away. Um, maybe there's something that's really important to you, but it's not really that urgent. You could just plan to do it ASAP. That's, you know, something that you could put on your calendar for maybe a few weeks from now. Um, and you just want to plan in a time to get it done. Maybe there's something that's urgent, but it's really not that important to you. So this is something that you can delegate, you know, maybe it's cleaning the house for, um, an upcoming event. Uh, maybe you hire somebody to do that for you because you, it's really important for you, for you to get done. You want to have a clean space to welcome your, your guests into, um, but at the end of the day, it's not like it's your superpower to, to clean. So that's a e really easy task to delegate. Um, or if you realize that maybe it's not urgent and it's really not that important at all, then you can actually dump it all together or just postpone it indefinitely. Like maybe uh, a few months down the road, you kind of set a reminder for it and check in and see if this is something that really still needs to get done. And just a reminder that it's okay to say no. Know your values. As humans, we're constantly faced with difficult decisions. When you find yourself at a fork in the road, look to your core values for guidance. If you know it's really important to you, your decisions will come easily. You can prepare yourself for the never-ending series of choices that you'll have to make as the creator of your life by knowing your values and sticking to them. And just to go back to this slide really quick, we are constantly getting invitations from the people around us. Um, and maybe it's 
for a fun event. Maybe it's for a work opportunity. Maybe it's um, to help somebody with, uh, you know, their big move that they have coming up. And I know that we as humans just have this innate desire to help people. We love to serve. We love to give. And that's wonderful. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. But I just like to remind you that if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're saying yes, when you really mean no, when you feel like you're really being spread thin, you're really not doing anybody a service. The The best way to help people is by filling your own cup so that then when the time comes, you really do have that energy to give and that love to give. And so just remember that if you are asked to do something, but you're feeling really swamped, you're already feeling really overwhelmed, just remember that it is more than okay to say no. And that maybe that person, um, it's not going to be the end of the world. Like you don't have to worry that if you don't help that they're going to be at a loss, like they will figure something else out. Um, in most cases. So uh, don't put all of the weight on, of the world on your shoulders. And remember that you have uh, the ability to say no when something isn't aligned. And so, like I mentioned, knowing your values is going to be something that really helps you when you're faced with those decisions. So what are your top three core values. Take a minute to think about it, to write it down. And here are some examples. Love, service, freedom, fun, family, truth, beauty, peace, comfort, adventure, health, education, equality, accessibility, creativity, expansion, joy, sustainability. And Your values could be something totally different. They might not be on this list at all, Um, but I just wanted to give you a place to start. And so if there's not really something specific that's coming to your mind, something that you value, um, then you can pull from this list. But I just want you to think about what are your three top core values so that you have a place to look when you're maybe faced with a decision. And you can ask, does this align with my values? And we're just going to move on. And like I said, just pause the video if you needed extra time for any of these reflection questions. Um, The dark moon or the new moon phase is a really great time to connect. The new moon is a perfect time to welcome in a fresh start. While the moon is dark in the sky during this period of transition, take time to rest and reflect. Figuratively speaking, the dark moon is a good time to fill your cup and recharge your batteries. Tenderly care for the temple you reside in so that you can fully experience the bliss of life through your human senses. Embrace the darkness and go inward to receive divine guidance from your soul so that you can set your intentions for the new lunar cycle with clarity and purpose. And I just wanted to put a little photo here of this like very wintry, cozy scene at home. Um, So if you, you know, really did spend that fall season kind of deliberating, um, delegating, and then detaching, then you are prepared to just spend some quality time with yourself. And this is an amazing time to dream, to receive that divine guidance, and then to really get clear on what you want that vision for the future to look like. So step one, dream. What could be more beneficial for your growth and personal development than rest? Utilize this time of darkness to relax and recover while the collective energy of the planet is at its lowest. It's important to stop and refuel before beginning a new project. So give yourself permission to take breaks, sleep in, and honor your energy levels. You are worthy of downtime. Step two, download. Once you've created space to step away, 
rest, and reconnect with your intuitive body, you're bound to feel enlightened and to be full of inspired ideas. Carve out time to sit in stillness and connect to your higher self. Keep a journal nearby for an easy place to store your downloads the moment they come through. And three, design. Don't filter yourself when it comes to designing your dream life. Let your mind wander and explore all the different avenues. If you really want to have some fun with it, gather up some art supplies and colorfully bring your vision to life in the, in the form of a vision board. Tap into your inner child and be creative. Spend a little time just playing, coloring, drawing, gluing, whatever feels good. Um, or if you want, you can truly just do this all in your mind um, and just develop this visualization practice. Um, and just a note on just like those receiving that those divine downloads. Um, I don't know about you, but I have so much going on in my brain that I have a hard time keeping track of the days of the week. So my Google calendar is color coded. Um, and I know that like, if I don't schedule everything in and check off every single line item on my to-do list one by one, um, that I'm not going to make progress, that those things aren't going to get done. If I don't write something down in my calendar, it's very likely that I'm never going to do it. So I've come to realize that the same strategy works for my hopes and dreams. If there's ever a time to write something down, it's the moment when that light bulb goes off and I'm suddenly hit between the eyes with an inspired idea. Inspiration is fleeting and the distractions of everyday life can quickly steal back our attention before we even realize that our intuition was speaking to us. So when you find things that make you feel good, when you find things that make you feel inspired, when you have this awesome idea, when you have a vision for the future, write it down, take note of it and make sure that you have a place to store your thoughts so that later when you're searching for some inspiration, you have a place to look. And this can look different for everybody. Maybe you keep a Word document or a note on your phone. Um, just have a place to jot down your ideas. So when and where do you get your best ideas? Are you in the shower? Are you on your morning run? Is it in the middle of the night? What's the easiest way for you to track those thoughts? A journal, maybe post-it notes, a Google Doc, a voice memo, or a note on your phone. There are so many different ways that you can do it. So just take a minute to think it through and come up with a strategy so that you're ready to capture inspiration the moment it strikes. Create the waxing moon phase. So a waxing moon, when the moon is growing in the sky, is the best time for drawing things to you. It's a time for amplification, attraction, growth, and expansion. Take aligned action towards your goals while the collective energy of the planet is on the rise. Treat this phase of the moon like springtime and water the seeds of the intentions you planted in your garden with the new moon. Know your purpose clearly and keep it at the forefront of every decision that you make. You must first have the knowledge of your power, second, the courage to dare, and third, the faith to do. Charles Hainel, The Master Key System. So sometimes you have to really just take a leap of faith, um, but you don't always have to take this big leap. Either way, you do have to at some point take action in this manifestation process. You can't just sit around and wait for things to happen. I think sometimes we have this idea that manifestation is all about, you know, the thinking things into existence, but it's really about knowing that you're powerful, knowing that you have the power to create your dream life and then taking action towards it. So at some, at some point you have to have the faith to get up and take that first step. Woo! 
Okay, sorry if you can still see my screen here. This is my friend Jeremy. I did have a picture of him on that slide, and I think I still have it linked. Uh, okay, let's see. Can I move on to the next slide here? All right, perfect. Three actionable steps to take during the waxing moon phase. One, decide. At some point, you've got to commit to a goal. So make an unchangeable decision to go for it. Announce your intentions to the people in your community for support and accountability. Tell them what you're up to. This is a perfect time to open up your throat chakra and start to speak your dreams into existence. You've committed to your next move and that's a reason in itself to celebrate. So shout it from the rooftops. Step two, devote. So your boots are strapped and you've decided on a path forward. But what's going to keep you going when the going gets tough? Having a clear purpose behind your goals will fuel you forward with energy and passion for your work. Know your mission and keep it at the forefront of every decision that you make. And step three, do the work. I like to think of this part of the ritual as the sacred doing. At some point, you've got to get up out of your meditation seat and take the necessary steps to bring your visions to life. So keep your purpose front of mind as you water the seeds of your greatest intentions and you will experience tremendous growth. Aligned action. So I just wanted to take a little moment here to talk about uh, goals and goal setting and really taking aligned action towards your highest aspirations. Divine transformation will take place in your life when your purpose, your intentions, and your actions align. So reflect often to stay on the fast track towards your wildest dreams. So I, you, you've probably heard the saying, a goal without a plan is just a wish, but I really like to add to that and say a plan without a purpose is a waste of time. And I, I guess what I mean by that is, you know, there are so many times where in my life I've, you know, set a goal and I've accomplished it. But then at the end of the day, I just really didn't feel fulfilled. Um, and so all of that work that I put in kind of ended up feeling like a big waste. Like, well, what, what am I going to do next? For example, like I, wanted to become a TV news personality. And so I went to school and I studied broadcast journalism and I got a job right out of college as the morning anchor and reporter for uh, a local TV news station. And so I achieved this, you know, this dream and it seemed so glamorous, but really at the end of the day, I found myself miserable, hating my job and it wasn't aligned at all. And that was because I really didn't have a purpose behind that goal. And so that's why it's so important to have a purpose. But before we move on and I talk a little bit more about purpose and giving you my process for goal setting, I just want you to reflect a little bit. Can you think of an example from your life when you've reached a goal, but at the end of the road, you felt unsatisfied, unfulfilled, and unsure of what to do next? And go ahead and pause if you need some more time or feel free to just revisit that reflection question down the road. Um, but purpose is key. Purpose provides direction when we're working towards a desired outcome. So I want you to think of your purpose as your North Star and then allow your intentions or your goals to ebb and flow with the seasons of life. So if you want a little chart for mapping out your goals, um, for mapping out the kinds of actions that you are going to take to get to your dream life, to reach that, uh, that overarching dream, you can use this little chart, um, starting with your purpose, starting with your mission statement. That is kind of where you're going to write what it is that you really want to create at the end of the day or what you want to manifest and specifically thinking about the feelings that you want to manifest. 
who you're going to help. Um, you know, and that's your, that's your why, why you want to create whatever it is that you see for your future. Then from there, your intentions or your goals should stem from your purpose. Um, and so you're going to write down several different goals that you could achieve to get you closer to that purpose, that overarching mission statement. And then your actions, what you're going to do about it, can stem from those goals that you wrote down. And so every single goal is going to have lots of different actions that you actually have to take to achieve that goal. And those goals aren't the end. Those goals are just meant to help you get closer to this. And so make sure that your goals are aligning with your mission statement, your purpose, and then the actions that you're taking are aligning with those goals. Because it's really tough to just kind of think like, does this action align with this overarching mission? There's kind of like a middleman here. And so um, then also these actions can also have lots of little branches of different actions that you actually have to accomplish that. So say um, my purpose is to share with every person around the world that they also have a divine purpose, that they have these superpowers that they can really use to help people and achieve the the most beautiful and fulfilling life possible. So how am I going to do that? Well, I could start a podcast or I could create a digital course. Uh, I could write a book. And so those would be the intentions, the goals. And so maybe my goal is to publish a book by the end of 2024. Well, so what actions can I take to bring that book to life? And how can I make sure that that book really aligns with my purpose, my overarching mission statement. I don't want to just write a book about anything. I want to write a book about teaching people how to use their purpose and sharing my experience and my knowledge and my stories. So I would then need to, uh, you know, write a book proposal. I would need to um, write the outline, actually write each chapter. And so those are all of the actions that I'd have to take um, that would allow me to accomplish that goal that then aligns with my overall purpose. So I hope that makes sense. Just a kind of a way to break it down and to look at it. Um, also, I just wanted to share that if your purpose isn't really clear yet, but you have a specific goal in mind, like for example, you just have always felt like um, you wanted to write that book, but you don't really know why. You don't really know what that overarching purpose is. You can use this exercise to get to the heart of your desire. So uh, I use a different example here, but um, you're going to start with your goal. What are you aiming to achieve? So this example is, I want to leave my nine to five job to start my own creative business as a photographer. So then you'd ask yourself, well, why is it important to leave your job and start your own business? Well, because I want more freedom, joy, and flexibility in my daily life, and photography makes me happy. Well, why is it important for you to have more freedom, joy, and flexibility? Well, because I want to be able, I want to be available for my friends and family without feeling burnout or overextended. Well, why is it important for you to be available for your friends and family? Well, because I love them, and I want to have the energy to support them and help them to overcome their own obstacles. Well, why is it important to have the energy to support and help your community? Because I feel a deep sense of joy and fulfillment when I know my loved ones are healthy and happy. Well, why is it important to feel joyful and fulfilled? Well, because I'm my best self when I'm happy and my cup is full. Well, why is it important for you to be your best self? Because when I'm a, my best self, I'm better able to show up and serve my community and create a ripple effect of positive change in the world. And so by starting with this goal and then really diving deep into it, peeling the layers of the onion and realizing that at the end of the day, what you really want is to feel like you're your best self so that you have the energy to show up and serve your community and create a ripple effect of positive change in the world. 
you now have a mission. You now have this sense of purpose behind your work, behind those actions that you're taking. And you're going to see that there's actually a million different ways that you can do this. Um, and that, you know, it's not, it doesn't all at the end of the day uh, come down to whether or not you can actually leave your job and start your own business. But when you can really focus on this part of the the um, the puzzle, knowing that you just want to be your best self and you want to have the energy and the time to serve your community and create that positive change in the world around you um, to raise the vibrations of the planet and you start to focus there, you're going to see that there are so many different ways and paths that you can get there and do that. Remember, your goals are not the end. They're simply a means to an end. There are infinite paths that you can take to get to the same destination. And I also just had to, to make sure I touched on inspired action. So we talked about taking aligned action, but if your intentions aren't crystal clear yet, you know, but you're feeling really inspired. You have this sense of purpose. Don't hesitate. Trust your gut and do what feels right. Inspired action is a great place to start, but just keep in mind that the more intentional that you can be about what you actually want to create for your life, the faster you'll begin to see results. But I just like to, to note that like where that purpose meets the action I like to call inspired action. And this is an awesome place to move from. And find the good in all of it. Don't sweat the small stuff. Relish in every tiny victory. Hold tight to your purpose when the going gets tough. And seek out silver linings when things don't go to plan. Everything happening now is leading to the fulfillment of your desires. And it's all meaningful. And you want to repeat the process. This isn't something that uh, is meant to be done once. This is meant to be repeated over and over and over again. And that is why I love using the moon to teach my manifestation ritual, to teach this goal setting process, because it just serves as a daily reminder um, of, you know, some different actions that we can take. And it doesn't mean that you have to totally align your life with the phases of the moon. It's just meant to serve as a reminder that there are times to really slow down and to really like just receive that divine guidance to connect. Um, and then there are times to really put in that, uh, that effort to take that aligned action towards what you want. Um, and then there are times just to take a little break and celebrate and enjoy life as it is. And then there are times that you want to, you know, clear out some of that stagnant negative energy and detach from some things that aren't serving you. Um, and that's why I just love uh, thinking about this as a cyclical process and just a little bit more symbolism to give you. Um, I like to think of life like a carnival. It's super noisy. You know, there's so much happening. You could be over here getting some cotton candy. You could be over this way watching a, a magic show. You could be over here going into the fun house. And um, there are all of these distractions. Maybe you're hanging out with the kids over uh, by the bleachers, smoking cigarettes. Like there are all of these different, <laughs> different distractions and things that you can do at this carnival. Um, but so I want you to think about this manifestation process, this ritual, like riding a Ferris wheel. So you're at the carnival and you're, you realize, you know what, I need a little break from all of this noise. I'm going to go and hop on the Ferris wheel. And it might feel a little bit, uh, scary because, you know, maybe you're a little bit afraid of heights or something. Um, but you know, you really just want to have some fun and celebrate. So you hop on the Ferris wheel down here at the bottom. You're like, all right, I'm going to live this time up. I'm going to celebrate. I'm going to go on this ride. And as you start to um, make your way up towards the top, you're kind of breaking free. You're detaching from 
um, all of that noise uh, and making a little bit of time and space for yourself. And then when you're up at the top here, it's quiet. You know, you have this higher perspective and you can really start to hear that intuitive voice come through. You're connecting to the divine. And then you receive these divine ideas. Maybe you have this inspiration. And so then this work that you take to create, you know, your dream life, it's going to feel easy because you have this kind of downward momentum. If you think about riding a Ferris wheel on the way down, it's kind of easy. It's, it's fun. And so that effort that you're putting in should feel fun. And it, there shouldn't really be this resistance. It should feel almost effortless. And then you can either continue to ride the Ferris wheel or you can hop off and you can go back to life and you can maybe spread what you just kind of learned and what you created with other people here at the carnival. Or maybe you just take another break and you have some fun. But at any point, if you need to step away and you need time to really get clear on what it is that you want to do next, hop back on the Ferris wheel and take some time apart from that busy, um, noisy life and take the necessary time to reflect and care for yourself and get really clear on what it is that you want so that you can create and manifest the life of your dreams. And practice makes progress. Progress requires patience, consistency, and unconditional self-love. Metamorphosis doesn't happen overnight. Divine transformation isn't about changing who you are. It's about becoming who you were born to be. So this process is really just about blossoming into the fullest, highest expression of yourself. And so slow down, reflect and nourish your mind on a regular basis. Surround yourself with people who remind you of who you truly are. Get fresh air, eat healthy foods, and move your body in a way that feels good. Try new activities that allow you to explore and be creative. Rest when you're tired. The sun will rise and we will try again. One more time, I clicked the uh, link instead of clicking to the next slide. Uh, but this is uh, a video that I created for a women's retreat um, in Costa Rica. And this was just such a beautiful example of uh, taking that time to connect to our divine selves um, and to spend that time connecting with other people who really inspire us and lift us up and show us what is possible. Um, I'm going to go back to my slide here, but this retreat was just such an amazing experience. Um, and you don't always have to go to a retreat in Costa Rica to make that loving time for yourself, but find ways to add that magic and find that support in your existing space and community um, and make that time just to, to love yourself and just kind of like add the magic into your daily life wherever you can. Find what feels good. So I don't know if you guys know Adrian Mishler, um, Yoga with Adrian on YouTube. She has hundreds of free yoga videos um, and this is just one of my favorite things to do when I just need a little bit of a break from the day. I need some time to reset. Um, and she has videos for uh, like all levels. Um, if you're a beginner, definitely just like look up beginner videos. But she always says, find what feels good. And so I just wanted to remind you that this is my process Take what feels good from it. Take what resonates with you and don't worry about the rest. Um, but feel free to just start with whatever feels good here. And then you can always come back and revisit and see if there's anything else that you want to add in. <laughs> Too 
many links. There's Adrian there. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use the arrow keys instead. Um, okay, and we're almost done. One final thought, becoming who you're meant to be begins with knowing, loving, and trusting who you already are. Be true to yourself and the rest will fall into place. Be kind, be loving, and be you. Thank you so much for listening and taking this time with yourself for being here to support me. Um, this is just uh, so meaningful to me knowing that you're here and you're listening. Um, and I just want you to know how grateful I am for you. Um, none of this would be possible if it weren't for you. Um, and you actually showing up and making this time for yourself is just proof to me that um, this kind of positive conversation, especially on the internet, is very needed. And I just hope that you um, can take something from it and uh, that it helps you as you're moving forward um, to create the most fulfilling life that you could imagine. I love you. I'm here for you. Just let me know if uh, you want to set aside any time to talk one-on-one -on -one, um, or feel free to send me an email at any point. Um, but I love you. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll talk to you soon.